Welcome back to Growing Your Own Food in Your Own Backyard. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing and don't forget to like. My fellow vegetable gardening enthusiasts, nothing simple in Japanese beetle battle. Here is my story about my journey in combating this invasive, destructive pest. The battle goes on, however, I will win this battle. Excited about starting my raised bed, the beginning of a new growing season. I started planting my seeds in late May 2018. I had mended my raised bed, added Amazonite rock dust, worm casting, my own composting that I did over the winter. Really excited about sowing my seeds for carrots, radishes, beets, onions, and spinach. And really looking forward to a really awesome crop and a great gardening experience. However, as the weeks progressed, I noticed that my seeds were not coming to fruition. And when I did see little seedlings coming up, the next day they were gone. And I couldn't understand what was going on. So I would wait and thinking that the seedlings just had a slow start, go back to the soil, try to determine if there was any issues. At that time, I didn't see anything. But then the seedlings started coming up more However, two or three days, they were gone. So I pulled back the soil in some areas of my raised bed, and I noticed I had grubs in my raised bed. However, I wasn't quite sure what type of grubs. I had not yet identified the grubs. Initially, I thought they were cutworms. So I eradicated those grubs in those certain areas of my raised bed and did a second direct sowing in my raised bed. Again, I, was, I seemed to be having the same problem. I noticed that my seedlings were being defoliated. I could not get my seedlings up strong enough to ward off any pests that was attacking them. And again, I did a second direct sowing in the raised bed by early June, I knew I had a problem. So I decided to excavate the entire raised bed. And what I discover is I had an infestation of grubs. However, I didn't know what type of grub it was. So I started doing research. There are two types of beetles that come to our um, region around early May, and that's the May-June beetle, and then of course the Japanese beetle. The more research I performed, I started realizing that this had to be a Japanese beetle grub. One morning as I was doing my routine monitoring, my routine walk around my garden, I spotted a Japanese beetle right on top of one of my red bricks. Lo and behold, I captured it. You can see the picture in the right hand corner of this video. At that point, I realized I have an infestation of Japanese beetle grubs. So now my journey is starting to battle this pest. Let me give you a little history about Japanese beetle. Management of Japanese beetle is complicated because adults and grubs, which is the lava, are very different from one another and cause injury to a variety of hosts. Control of just one life stage will not necessarily guarantee control of the other. Just a little history. The Japanese beetle was first introduced into Colorado in the early 1990s from nursery stock purchased in the Midwestern United States. Scientists and experts were caught off guard by the ability of the pest to establish itself in our region, the Colorado region. 
thinking that Japanese beetle, an insect that likes moistures and humidity, would never become a problem in the semi-arid Colorado climate. However, our urban landscape areas are oasis of green irrigated plant materials that the beetles love to eat and thrive in. And that's why they were able to settle in our region and start becoming a pest. The very invasive species first started showing up in Colorado in 2006 and they haven't gone away. The adult beetles eat away at fruits and some tree leaves. Japanese beetles popping up in yards all over town, chewing away at our plants. Fortunately, I wasn't dealing with the Japanese beetles adult. However, I was, Jap I was dealing with the Japanese beetle lava. Had I not monitored my garden as closely as I did and identified that this was a Japanese beetle lava, those Japanese beetles would have matured into Japanese beetles adults and they would have started defoliating my other shrubs because I am an avid gardener for roses. I have a huge rose bed in my front yard. I have an apple tree in my backyard. Uh, during my research, I've learned that these are the type of shrubs they like to feed on. The Colorado Department of Agriculture has focused its Japanese beetle prevention efforts on an external quarantine and monitoring nursery stock imported into Colorado from the Midwest and Eastern U.S. sources. For our home gardening communities, this pest is devastating, causing damage to ornamental grasses and fruit and vegetable crops. Where is the Japanese beetle in Colorado? Pretty much everywhere. Unfortunately, the Denver Metro has a high population level. What are my next steps? I decided to direct seed sowing in containers. I'm growing my carrots in containers, which is looking really good. I'm really pleased with how it's coming along. I'm also growing my kale and lettuce in containers. I'm also growing spinach in containers and I'm growing my beets in containers. I am getting a late start, so I'm hoping that the weather will cooperate and Colorado will continue to have warm weather into mid-October. I decided to go ahead and grow the cucumbers and tomatoes in my raised bed with the protective, the insect protective cloth over the soil. I actually ran out of containers. <laughs> and I normally grow my subtropical plants in containers. So... The next thing I will be doing is pursuing biological, biological con controls to cure and manage this Japanese beetle issue. So I, am, so I am going to be using nematodes, which is a microscopic round worm that's only, par that's, uh, only parasite insects that have been shown to be effective for controlling grubs. And I'm also going to be use. I'm also going to start using milky spore in my raised bed, which is a bacterial disease of grubs. It takes up to two years to be effective. It will eradicate grub for the long term. The dead grub gives then gives off billions of new spores that continue to inoculate the soil, and are taken up by following generations of grubs. I did learn that milky spore is not harmful to humans or pets or beneficial insects, wildlife, or aquatic life. However, from my research, it is safe to use in vegetable gardens. So I'm expecting for the milky spore to really start taking effect into the second or third year. The nematodes I will apply this season and apply it in spring and continue applying it for the subsequent years. I do believe that this method will correct the problem until the Japanese beetle infestation either subsides in Denver Metro or will stop coming to my front yard, excuse me, my uh, garden. My neighbor also is doing the same thing. We're trying to get the word out to all our other neighbors that they really need to be mindful of monitoring the Japanese beetles in their yard and taking necessary steps to control it so that we could uh, have a safe environment to grow our vegetables. What has been my management strategy this season to deal with this invasive destructive pest? 
as I said before, I had to excavate the entire raised bed. And during the entire four week period, which was basically in the month of June, I started completely eradicating the entire bed. Our neighbor next door, who's also an avid gardener and grows vegetables, was also having the same problem. So we were both combating this problem at the same time. I wanted to make sure that I continue eradicating this raised bed until I was convinced that I had got rid of all of the Japanese beetle grubs. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that I did have a Japanese beetle grub in my front yard about four or five years ago, and it is 90% eradicated just by the use of the Milky Spore product. So I was applying the Milky Spore product over my front yard over the past four years. I used it religiously in June and then again in fall because grubs will overwinter during the winter season and it is 90% eradicated. But I wasn't sure if this was a product I could use in my raised bed since I do garden organically. So again, more research. I found out that the Milky Spore product can be used in organic gardening. So that was an option for me to consider. Once I completed the eradication of my guard of my bed, I immediately put down an insect barrier cloth to keep the Japanese beetles from continuing to lay their eggs in my raised bed. Thank you for watching. For those who are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the like button. Look for my next video where I will be applying the beneficial nematode product and a big shout out to Nichols Retirement Empire.